can I start again if I am? I can't. Yeah. <laughs> this one will be right now. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing really well. Serious. So do I start? I already messed it up. I can't get my words out. <laughs> okay, cool. Should I go? They think we don't think for ourselves. That we just follow the lives that they lay out for us. Act out assigned roles, speak their scripts. They think we don't know it's a game. Like we can't see the squares that are on the board, the lines on the pitch. They think we can't adapt. That we'll just know to stay faithful to the options they provide. Because we can't make our own choices, choose our positions. They think it's too ingrained. That we're just carbon copies of our parents with better phones. They think they could just blow the whistles and we'll just jump up and run whenever they tell us. Forever. And it's fine. Let them think that. It's what they've always thought. We'll make it much sweeter when we fly away. Play on is really important because it's, it's the Almeida teaming up with Arsenal Football Club and the work that they have been doing with kids who perhaps have left school with not many qualifications and part of Play On is to get them to maybe go, come to the theatre for the first time and more importantly to, to, to write something for the theatre and to maybe act in the theatre and be a part of a theatre environment. So by, by saying we want to hear your voices, hear your experiences, they're worthwhile and they're unique. We value that and we want that, I think, is, is can be quite an empowering thing to do. Write it as though you're telling somebody else about, about it in, and, you're, and you're talking about it for the first time. And you can either say, this is what happened when, or you can, you can describe it as, this is happening to me now. This man. I don't know about you, but for me, he's the man. He keeps me up when I'm happy, brings me up when I'm down. He thinks he's so cool, but so do the kids at my school, because he's got a few jokes and he's good with a ball. This man drives a car, we go places that's far. We turn on the music and we sing in the car. We play and we fight. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. One time I punched him in the face. He knows what I can do. When he takes me to my house and we say our goodbyes, I tell him, Daddy, I love you, as I look into his eyes. So my name is um, Brian Fuala, and your name is? My name is Jelly Kikamba. What have you contributed into this play? Like, what have you done? Yeah, I've contributed a lot, actually. I've done um, two scripts that are going to be spoken today. One actually I'm doing myself and wow. one that respectively by a professional actor. Serious? Yeah, so it's, it's pretty good today. It's going to be pretty good. I've contributed by giving um, two scripts and making my own monologue. And uh, I think that it opens up your soul and it shows that um, you can express more knowledge than you think. I think my creative writing has gone to a higher level. And I think that younger kids should enjoy stuff like this if they get given the opportunity. We generated so much stuff. I mean, this, in this, in the whatever the four short sessions that we had, there were like I had to stop myself running off with all these ideas to write full-length pieces. Pick an age, boom, right? Pick a place, a place that you know well now. Pick a time, any time. Time is important. Time sets the light. I don't want to go in and tell people that everyone should write because it's not for everyone. But I do like the idea of letting people know that it's, you're allowed to do it, and if you do like it, you can. Right now, be specific. If you're in the shop, where in the shop? Zoom in a little bit. Garden bench, seven o'clock, and the street lights. Bedroom lights are off, TV on. Outside shop, sitting on the wall, 9 p.m., winter dark and wet. 21, Finsley Park, park bench, opposite playground, 12 p.m., sunny blue skies. Lovely, right? Okay, either something has just happened with somebody, or something is about to happen that fits your space, what could it be? I'm not trying to convince you of anything, I'm just showing you something that I love, and if you're into it, you're allowed to go and blossom and do whatever you want with it, and that's what I kind of take home every time. Two of the lads we got to take to um, the Arsenal training ground and met uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and he actually performed and read two of their monologues. So seeing their faces and their responses in that room to Alex reading their work was just extraordinary. And I see the video a couple of days after and I was over the moon, especially being an Arsenal fan from forever. <laughs> Elf on Estate, 
9 p.m. Winter. Dark and wet. He's outside the shop, sitting on the wall. He's 14. A cold wind blows dead leaves around the wet concrete. The camera spirals round to the two older boys pushing pedal bikes crossing the courtyard towards him. Awkward, hesitant, shifting. He watches without watching. Been getting a name lately. People are out for him. He takes the packet of cigarettes he had to ask the old guy to buy him. The old guy who's known him forever. He pulls one out, wheels his hands to stay steady as he sparks up. Calm the nerves. Can't look, shook. The two boys are nearly halfway across the courtyard now. Does any one of them look familiar? Palms are sweating. Is this it? Thinks he's doing a runner, then what? Be the guy who ran? Can't. Won't. Long pull. Feels his heart kicking in his chest. Exhale. The boys have scars on their faces. Just their dark eyes showing. The one on the left. That limp. The stoop in the stride. Like he stepped on a six inch nail. Nathaniel. But with who? And why no shout out? What do they want? Only one thing they can want. He stands up. Lifts his chin. Ready. Not ready. Fourteen. A boy. A man. A son. A life. Abdurazak and I'm 17 years old. Nora, I'm 17. I'm Ayub, I'm 15. If I ruled the world, I would change the class system. There's people in this world that don't have enough money. Give homeless people houses and that. Uh, Help people out of hunger. And there's people like, that, that are not treated equally. Try to make everyone around the world have a better life. Everyone is individual and needs a choice, and I'll help them make that choice. I don't want no one to feel left out in this world. I want a PhD, but I'm bound by money. These profit universities! People think I can't do it. But I can because I've got big plans. Through your eyes, we don't appreciate the finer things in life. Really, we are all still young and don't all play with a knife. When you look at me, I know you're thinking I have bad actions. Don't judge a book by its cover. You think that we're all roadmen and rude. But we're just trying to make it. But it don't help us when we're people looking down on us. People like you. I feel like it's really important that youth feel like they have a voice and that they have a platform to use their voice and that what they think and say about the world is important and that we need to hear it. I've got something to say. I don't think you're listening. My time is now. Look at me. To watch them watching actors perform their work and to see their faces light up and be like, rah, I wrote that and and it sounds good. Yeah, that was really rewarding. You know, you write something down on a piece of paper, and then the minute someone else gets picks it up and interprets it and reads it back to you, it's become something else. So after we read it um, and they gave us notes, they were very detailed notes, and they'd obviously um, enjoyed and got a lot from hearing us read their words. So um, it was a real opportunity, I think, for those young people to see, you know, just the power of words, just the power of expressing yourself in writing and where that can go. I hope that they'll take away a boost in confidence that they are capable of writing, that they do have things to say, that their voice is heard and that it is valid. I hope that they feel less intimidated by theatre in general and particularly by this theatre. I think coming here and seeing in the finale, like everything just coming in together, just seeing that it makes you believe that you've done something special and that you've made something. Like you started from scratch and you're seeing people who have been on TV doing it, so you, you'll be like, wow. I think that makes me feel more special inside. I always thought I'd become something. I believed my name would be somewhere, somewhere high. Known and spoken like the names of people I looked up to, heroes. But I look in the mirror and stare into the eyes of a bitter man. A man who has seen too much yet conquered nothing. A man who threw himself along a road he was told led to something. Somewhere. I have waded through lies, crunched over mistakes, fallen, gotten up, fallen again, 
bloodied, battered, bruised for what? Just the empty darkness. So if there is a light, if you've seen it, please be my guide. There's no stoppage to your creation. Yeah. So can you count one, two, three? Yeah, yeah. Can you count it behind the camera? Yeah. There's no stop. There's there's no stop to your creation. Two, three. Yeah. There's no stopping to your creation. Thanks to Steve for the creation. One, two, three, four. There you are.